Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I dig into the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, let's jump headfirst into these questions. My video on the Subaru Outback Ham Radio install generated a lot of questions and comments, both from Outback owners looking to add a rig into their car, and also other vehicle owners with general mobile radio installation questions. One such question was from Rizal. Great video. I just got an Yesu FTM 400 and I installed it in my 2001 Jeep Wrangler. I did notice a bit of alternator noise. Anything I can do about that? Well, alternator wine can be a tricky proposition. It may be a signal that one of the diodes in your alternator has gone bad and the power isn't as clean as it should be. Considering the age of the alternator in a 2001 vehicle, that very well could be the case. A common solution uh, consists uh, of, of using a brute force filter near the alternator. This would be a large capacitor and chokes to filter the power. But simpler methods do exist. First, take your power directly from the battery, both positive and negative, so you're not subject to the uh, vehicle's power system noise. And second, make sure you have a good ground for the antenna. The ARRL has some additional resources on mobile radio installs that you may find useful. I'll include a link to that in the uh, video description below. In, rep in reply to that comment, I did receive another question as to why we want to fuse the negative in addition to the positive when pulling power directly from the battery. And there's a couple schools of thought on this. You fuse a negative in addition to the positive when you make a direct connection to the battery in order to protect it from wiring faults uh, related to your install. But there's also a concern that if there is a ground fault, the fuse on the negative line would blow and potentially cause energy to seek an alternative path, which would be directly through your radio. Fortunately, ground faults are quite, quite rare if you follow good practice and not route the power cables in places where they're going to bind, fray, or wear. This means using grommets to protect the cable from sharp edges and not running power uh, through pinch points like your doors. With that said, I believe uh, the general consensus is that uh, to fuse the leads for, to a battery connection and fuse only the positive if you are pulling the ground from the vehicle chassis. But even newer cars with aluminum bodies and um, engine idle shutdown can cause more issues. And I found a handy uh, web page uh, by a K0BG that has some great info on wiring uh, modern vehicles. I'll throw that link below in the video description. My only caveat is that um, if you start searching online for, um, a, for in, a help on, on wiring, there's a lot of old information on the internet about vehicle power for radio equipment, and automo automobile technology has increased greatly in the last decade. So you should follow your vehicle manufacturer's recommendations for wiring any types of accessory equipment, and this would include amateur radio gear. All right, next up, a couple of questions about the microphone. And Mark writes, uh, hi Michael. Uh, one thing I must stress in regards to mic placement is uh, when not using, the, as in the microphone, uh, make sure you don't put it in a cubby hole in the console. I did that and found my mic was keyed up. Fortunately, I noticed quickly and removed it from the cubby hole. Speaking of cubby holes, I have one in my, in my um, Chevy Traverse that I simply cut out a piece of wood that would fit snug and mounted it to the back of the control head bracket. I'm using uh, the FT7900. So when I feel uh, I need to remove the control head from view, I just unplug the cable and pull the head out of the, out of the cubby and uh, put it in the glove box. My external speaker sits on the console under the armrest to give me good audio. Oh, and as far as the radio under the driver's seat, make sure there, is, there aren't any heat vents for the back seat passengers located under the driver's or front passenger seats. The radio would not like the heat. And these are some really great points. Um, you know, make sure you put your, your microphone in a place that it's not gonna, you're not going to um, have a, a stuck mic or open mic problem. And also, if you're sticking your radio under, the, under either the driver or the passenger seat, make sure you have an adequate airway, uh, both so the radio doesn't overheat and so that the passengers in the back still re receive heat from the car. Next up, I install uh, a 
I installed an ICOM 2370 in my 04 Catacoma and recently started using the Night Eyes Steely to hold my mic to the dash. While they are spendy, uh, they work well and um, I can just grab and pull rather than having to lift it off the hook. Yet the magnet still is hold strong enough for um, a washboard mountain roads. Thanks for that recommendation. A magnetic holder like the Night Eyes sounds like a really good solution for the microphone. And I'll put a link to that um, for that device in the video description if, you wanna, if, if others want to utilize something like that. On mic extension cable, Scott writes, uh, the mic extension, is that a standard phone cable uh, with a junction box? Okay, the, uh, the Yaesu FTM400 XDR uses a six pin RJ12 modular plug and cable for the microphone. Uh, they sell a mic extension kit, but um, the cable is, is like three meters long and it's a little pricey. So I went to Amazon and uh, bought a four foot six conductor cable with um, RG12 six pin plugs and a six pin inline coupler. Total cost was about $11. Other radios use the uh, six pin modular connector for their microphones too. So you can make a custom length extension cable you know, for your iComs and Kenwoods also. In my video, I mentioned that I needed to add an external speaker for better audio. Chris asks, well, can you not output your audio to the car speakers? Okay, I made that consideration, and I might do a little research on my options of running the audio through the sound system before I add an external speaker. I do like to listen to FM broadcast radio when I'm not talking on the mobile, so I'd have to figure out how the two can, can coexist. But one neat feature with the FTM 400 is that its audio out, its audio out is split into stereo. So the A band goes to the uh, left channel and the B band goes to the right. If you do decide to run your audio through the car system, uh, you can leave it like that. Otherwise, Ayesu does supply an adapter to mix the channels down to a mono signal. So enough about the mobile radio installs. Uh, let's move on to another question. Uh, Daniel writes, I want to buy my first ham radio. Can you recommend a good radio for a novice? It doesn't have to be the cheapest. Thanks. Uh, the cheapest isn't always the best deal, and uh, you get what you pay for in terms of quality. Uh, the good news is both the ICOM and the ASU have some excellent, excellent deals going on from now until the end of the year. Uh, for a handheld, uh, I'm going to recommend the ASU FT4XR for $99, or the FT70DR for $159. Uh, the FT70DR includes System Fusion uh, Digital, which may be appealing to you if you want to if you've got a fusion repeater nearby. For mobiles, uh, the FTM 3200DR is only $145. Even better deal is the Kenwood TM281A, uh, which is two meter analog and 65 watts out for only $132. All of these prices I found over at uh, gigaparts.com. They're current as of December uh, 2018. Uh, if you are uh, budget-minded, uh, the only analog Chinese handheld radio that I'm gonna recommend is the BTEC UV5X3 for about $59. Although I've seen it as low as $45 on Amazon during the holidays or when they run a special sale event. Speaking of cheap radios, I received this comment from Stefan. Uh, nice test and review as always. Uh, he's referring to my uh, Redivus RT95 review. Uh, most cheap Chinese radios do have a bad receiver. Uh, can you say something about that? Well, thanks for the comments. Yes, inexpensive radios uh, rely on direct conver conversion for detecting the RF signal. Uh, the, the direct conversion circuits are crammed into uh, one or two microprocessor chips, and they can be prone to poor sensitivity and overloading because they lack the proper filtering in the receiver stages. Uh, we don't have any fancy test equipment, but um, I am planning to do a video that demonstrates kind of in a, in a real world situation, the differences between uh, direct conversion and the more traditional uh, super heterodyne uh, receiver types. Last question, uh, Patrick writes, uh, I'm looking at purchasing a Yesu FTM 3200DR for home use. So uh, what kind of power supply would I need to run it? Well, the FTM 3200DR is a great rig and it'll do up to about 65 watts of of power. At full power, the radio will pull about 14 amps. Um, my recommendation is if you're looking to purchase a power supply is to consider a 25 amp switching power supply. Street price, they're around $100. A 25 amp supply will give you plenty of power for two VHF UHF mobile radios 
or 100 watt HF rig. So you're going to have a little bit of growth capacity there. Um, and why, why a switching supply and not the more traditional uh, linear supplies? Well, the big difference is weight. Uh, you know, this is a this is a switching power supply, relatively lightweight. You know, under under a uh, two or three pound, about three pounds. And uh, this is an equivalent 20 amp linear power supply. This thing is weighs about. 20, 25 pounds. So there's a big weight difference between the two. Now the linear supplies are going to be uh, very quiet, uh, no noise or ripple or things like that. But modern switching supplies, you know, in addition to being lightweight and inexpensive, they're also pretty well filtered with little RF hash and are a lot more energy efficient than the linear supplies. So uh, I, I've been moving away from the linear supplies towards the switching supplies myself. And now some quick announcements before I close this episode. You know, the year is rapidly coming to a close, so that means my annual year-end countdown is only of the 10 best videos will be here in a few short weeks. Uh, this year, I'm planning to do a poll uh, for a People's Choice Award, so watch for that poll to appear uh, either on my Facebook page or here on YouTube. And also, uh, coming up in January, on Saturday, January 5th, 2019, I'll be at the West Alice Radio Amateur Club's Midwinter Swap Fest in Waukesha, Wisconsin. That's at the Waukesha Expo Center. I'm going to have a uh, table set up selling my VHF and UHF antennas. And also, I'll just be available to chat. Love to talk to people that stop by, stop by the booth. It's one of the bigger ham fests in, uh, the, in the upper Midwest, so if you're in the neighborhood, please consider stopping by. And as always, if you like this video, please give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And also check out some of my other videos that are recommended here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and, the little, and, pressing, and ringing that little notification bell will remind you when future videos are released. Well, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.